Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Izukanji Kashiwa here. But since we're all friends, you can call me Izu. If you're new here, I talk movies, series, gaming, music, basically everything entertainment. And if you're into any of those things, I'd strongly recommend you hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get that content first. Okay? Do all that good stuff. Dr. Miles Monroe, may his soul rest in peace, once said, a woman is created by God to receive. So whatever you give a woman, she will receive it, incubate it, multiply it, and give it back. So if you give a woman a sperm, she will receive it, incubate it, multiply it, and give you back a child, a baby. If you give a woman groceries, she will receive it, multiply it, and give you back a meal. If you give a woman a house, she will receive it, multiply it, and give you back a home. And if you give a woman frustration, she will receive it, multiply it. So, fellas, before you consider any other thing, when you're receiving frustration from a woman, the first thing you should consider is, what are you giving? For her to be giving you back this rage, this anger, this frustration, what are you giving? He said the woman receives, incubates, multiplies, and gives back what you give. All right, today we're going to look at the movie Acrimony, Tyler Perry's Acrimony. It raised all sorts of controversy when it came out. So let's get into it. <laughs> When it came out, I probably talked about this movie more than any other movie in terms of debate. And I didn't even see it when it just came out. This is what happened. When it came out, I didn't go to see it. So the guys that went and saw it came to tell me about it. When they narrated the synopsis to me, my immediate reaction was, what's wrong with this woman? This woman was wrong. Because there was this debate of who was wrong, the man, or the woman. And instantly, when the movie was explained to me, my instant reaction was, the woman was dead wrong. And I'm sure that's the reaction most of you had. Even some of you who actually saw the movie, that's the reaction you had. So one of these guys told me, don't judge too quickly, watch the movie. You need to watch the movie. Please do watch the movie, then you can give your opinion on who was wrong. So who do you guys think was wrong? The woman or the man? If you haven't seen the movie, you should. It's a pretty decent movie to watch. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, who was wrong, the man or the woman, in the movie Acrimony. Let me know, by now. I'll give it a second. Okay, so what do I think? Who do I think was wrong between the woman or the man? Because looking at it at first glance, it's easy to feel the woman was wrong. All you see from the first few scenes of the movie is this angry woman who's just vengeful and bitter and just wants to get revenge. And the man is portrayed as this innocent man who is just trying to follow his dreams. Okay? That's your first impression. Maybe even after you watch it up to the end of the movie, that's your impression. That's the easiest impression to get. But when you look at it closely and analyze the movie scene by scene, you start noticing a few little things that you could have easy, you could have easily missed. So if you miss those things, that's why I'm here. I am going to bring those things to light. And by the end of this video, I hope you will see this from a different perspective. How best can we look at this? Let's start from the very beginning. From the very beginning, the very first thing that hit me was when she received money from her mother's trust. After the mom died, she received a decent chunk of money in her inheritance, including the house, but there was money as well. And she told him about it. It's his reaction, the first reaction when they sit on a bench, the first reaction that he had when she was telling him about her and how much money she had inherited and all of that. He said something, but it's not what he said, it's how he said it. He was telling her about how he was late for class that day and how he needed to get around and work on his project. He was working on this battery that he needed 
to show to some guy, a venture capitalist, who would hopefully invest in his project. But the logistics of all this is what he was explaining to her. He was explaining it in a very manipulative way. He didn't just ask and say, oh, it would be helpful if I had a car. It's how he said it. He almost guilted her into buying him a car. So that didn't sit, that was the very first red flag for me. That didn't sit too well with me. Movie progresses and 18 whole years have passed. She's still with him. Her money has run out at this point and she has to get two jobs to support him and keep up the payments to maintain her house. Let's go on. So 18 years have passed and they have been married and she's basically supporting them financially. She's focused on the bachelor. But for some reason, he needs more money to pump into research and parts and everything he needs to make this thing work. So again, he sits down with her in a very manipulative way and somehow convinces her to mortgage their home so that he can get some cash to finish off his project. Which again is a good thing because she's doing this because she loves him and she believes in what he's doing. So they mortgage their house and she has to get an extra job to support them and keep up the payments for the house and for the mortgage. It's easy to feel like the woman was just supposed to support her man. Here's how I feel about that. And this is just my opinion. The woman was supposed to support the man, but let's break it down for a second here. It took 18 years that she was supporting this relationship, that she was supporting this union, this marriage. In these 18 years, as the movie is portrayed, do you remember at any point where the man actually said, I will do this part? Do you remember any contribution that the man put into the relationship? What did he contribute? Even when they were still in uh, college, dating, what was his contribution? She was the one doing everything. He wasn't doing anything at all. And yes, of course, right now I'm saying, but Izu, come on. The man was in a bad place. She was in a better place financially. So why wouldn't she do it? And you're right. But after he finishes college, why not get a job that at least pays the bills? We all have dreams. I have my own dreams and aspirations that are out of this world. But realistically speaking, I know I have to pay rent. I know I have to buy gas. I know I have to do the little things so that I can have an opportunity to do the big things. This man, very bluntly put, was a user. He wasn't doing this us thing. He was doing only what progressed his dream alone. Think about it. Which part of the movie is he ever considerate of what the woman wants? Where in the movie is Robert, the character, ever considerate of Melinda's needs? What does she want? What can I, as Robert, the man in this relationship, do to help? At no point does that happen. He doesn't help her in any way at all. He's only focused on his dream. Now, that was okay when they were not married, but now they were one, they were married, they were together, they were a union. So in that union, there was no room for him doing things that would only progress his personal things. He had to do things that moved both of them as a union forward together, which he did not do at any point. And this repeated cycle of manipulation that was there, any form of abuse, and yes, it is abuse, emotional abuse, any form of abuse done repeatedly alters the psyche of a human being. It makes you a new person. And of course, some people use this and turn it into a positive, but there are those people that aren't strong enough to handle that form of abuse over a prolonged period of time that just breaks them. And that's what I believe happened to Melinda. A girl buys you a car and you have the audacity to go and be with another woman. You have to question it at this point. Just the very first thing he did, manipulates her into buying a car, then goes and celebrates purchase of said car with another woman. Just that first thing should make you question where his loyalties lie. Is he, is he really interested in her or was he interested in the benefits that came with being with her? She's taken to the hospital. She's told we have to perform a surgery that will basically make you sterile. This all happens in one night. So past this point, I think the only thing she had was at least I still have him. But as time went on, he had no interest in her. The only thing he was focused on was making his battery work. This is your wife at this point. So I'm convinced he wasn't in it 
for love or for her. It was in it for the extra stuff that she came with. The money, the house, the fact that she could have uh, given him a comfortable life while he was working on his life. The other thing is this. He finds the same Diana that he cheated on his now wife with and he has to go through hard to get to him. This is a very delicate situation. As a guy who had an indiscretion with the very woman, the very first thing he was supposed to do was go to his wife and explain the situation to her. I have to meet Prescott. He's the guy that can make all of this come true. But in between me and this venture capitalist is this woman. And this woman, you and me have history. But the man keeps it a secret. And it just so happens days pass and her bag is found in his truck. Look at how bad this situation looks now. It could have been solved by him just telling her. He did not do that. So when she finds out, obviously, another thing breaks. She doesn't have the at least I still have him thing keeping her together. So now everything falls apart. She loses it completely. This is 18 years of abuse. So you have to consider what damage this man did consistently over these 18 years. Everything that made her believe in the positive and the good was damaged by the lies, the cheating, lack of attention, all of those things. So of course she broke. Of course, she was mentally damaged. She was psychologically battered day after day after day after day for 18 years. Of course, she was angry. Of course, she was frustrated. If the man had done things right, if he had been more responsible, if he had been more considerate, if he had been more caring, if he had been a husband to that woman, she wouldn't have broken to the point where she became this mad, vengeful woman that we were introduced to. He created that monster. After all your debates and everything, I'm circling it today and I'm telling you the man was wrong. Okay? Alright. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. It's been Izukanji Kashiwa with you. See you next time. And as always, dare, dare to be great. See what happens. Peace.